Getting smooth, consistent image to video generations with AI can be a little hit or miss. Characters shift, faces glitch, and if you try any kind of motion, well, you might be out of luck. But today I got a solution for that and it works without fine tuning, no training, no Laura, no MPaint. And the new elements feature in Kling 1.6 claims to fix all of that with better subject consistency, better dynamics and better visual quality. In this video, we'll test the update ourselves, generate some custom shots and I'll show you how to use elements step by step so you can see if it's actually worth your time. So let's do a quick walkthrough here. Elements lets you upload up to four images of the same subject and Kling uses those to stabilize the output, right? So instead of a single prompt generating wildly different frames, Element tries to match your input images and preserve kind of the, the, the subjects, right? So the body language and the style all the same across your video. So you got a writer prompt. So here in this example, we, we got the man here, or well, you see the prompt here in screen, I'll put it in screen somewhere. And you can set the duration. We are going to select Kling 1.6 as the model. And after our generation, you will see something like this. You'll get the generations in a few minutes time. And as usual, we'll download this without watermark. Nobody likes watermarks on AI videos or well, any videos for that matter. So let's see what the, the, this feature in this model can do next, right? So in our test here, we are going to try something fun. We're going to do a flamingo wearing sunglasses and riding a skateboard. We got to upload each image here separately. So we'll either select what we want from each manually, or we can let Kling can automatically decide for us, right? So for the flamingo, we'll select the subject and for the sunglasses, the subject again, which is, you guessed it, the sunglasses, and leave the background as an auto reference. And we uh, put in the prompt and uh, presto change it. Let's generate. And uh, well, here's the result of that. And I think that's pretty cool. Now, as these video modes improve, right, the motion just gets better and better. Now, the cool part about this is kind of mixing and matching all of these elements and, and, and getting that amazing motion just to work, you know, way back in older models, even slight motion would completely change the, the, the scene or, you know, it would break or here, you know, with the elements the character lighting motion, everything stays consistent, even across camera movements and uh, well, multiple elements here, like the sunglasses and the flamingo motion again is where most AI models have had issues previously. Now again, they are getting better and so is Kling. And if you've ever tried to generate like sports or dance or any interaction, you know how it works, right? And usually you can kind of measure by how quickly something goes, right? Any AI video back when was just slow motion and now we can actually get some speed in them. So th I think that's kind of cool. So with Kling's new motion update, the movement and timing, they all feel kind of natural, you know? So here we have two raccoons in chef's hats and a pancake. So what do we want them doing? Well, flipping the pancake, obviously. Let's see if they can collaborate on this too. So I generated three separate pictures with the raccoons and the pancake and the kitchen. And let's just upload all of them and we click generate. For our next one here, let's try to do something uh, actually in slow motion. So previously everything kind of was in slow motion, but now we're going to prompt for slow motion, right? So I'm having this capybara or try to make it look like it at least. I wanted to jump off into the pool. So let's have the camera pan around when it splashes the water. See if we can get this work, right? I mean, there are some, there are some improvements to be made in the realism maybe, but just in terms of taking all of those objects, mashing it into one scene. There we go. Let's continue with the animals, right? So we have generations of frogs, a violin, Well, they actually ha already have violins in the image uh, and a theater scene. But that's besides the point. Let's just throw it in in a spotlighted theater. The camera slowly zooms in as the curtains sway behind them, right? So Kling Elements works with multiple subjects, not it's not one frog, it's three frogs, right? As long as the reference images match. 
So you can still get motion interaction, but each character kind of keeps their face and, and form throughout. So it's great for doing multi-character consistency interaction. Now look at this amazing orchestra, right? It's a trio, and then it's a quintet. No, that's five. A quartet. So we had a trio, and then it's a quartet, then it's a quintet, sextet, septet. I have no idea what the, uh, if you even count that high in, in band terms. If you know, put in the comments below, and I'll learn something. If you do this generation without the elements feature, it's going to look something like this. So this multi-elements feature in Kling is honestly pretty cool. It's something I like to use very much. Now, will it match the quality of, of the latest Kling models and, and in terms of text to video? Well, you know, maybe not, but it's it's close-ish. The cool thing about this feature is you have more control, right? What's quality if you can't control it? It's not going to solve everything, but if you're experimenting with characters, it's a solid feature worth trying. I'm going to leave a link to Kling below if you want to try it out. And I'll see you in another video. Thanks. Bye.